Are you wanting to build equity in real estate, but you're not really sure where to start? Maybe you have money saved up, but you can't afford what you want to buy. Well, in this video, I'm going to discuss how I personally built my equity up in real estate and how I advise my clients to get started. You're going to want to watch until the end of this video because I'm going to share how to change your mindset so that you can make this work. My name is Stephanie Lafergi. I am a real estate agent and mortgage broker. And today I wanted to share a little bit of my story with you on how I built my equity in real estate. I am originally from Vancouver, BC. I was born in North Vancouver. I was living in Yale Town, which is a community in Vancouver. Very well known. It has incredible restaurants, nightlife. It's very close to the ocean. It's absolutely beautiful. I had some money in the bank and I wanted to buy a property. And when I started looking, the prices back then, it was in 2016, were around $1,000 per square foot. So if I wanted to buy a 500 square foot condo, I was going to be paying about half a million dollars. And that just didn't sit right with me. I knew that I wanted my money to go further. And that is when I started to really think about what I wanted to do with that money that I had saved up and where I wanted to buy. There were some other condos in other parts of Vancouver, but I just genuinely did not want to live there. So I started to really think about my next move. And I realized that I might have to make some sacrifices to get to where I wanted to be in life. And that is the first thing that I want to mention is if you want to get ahead in real estate, you may have to consider making some sacrifices. Now, this might seem obvious, but a lot of people don't even consider moving away from their hometown. So I would start with really asking yourself what you're willing to do to get some real estate and to make a move. People are probably sitting there wondering, well, couldn't you have just bought an investment property and stayed in Vancouver? and let your equity grow that way. Potentially, however, you need 20% down when you're buying an investment property, and I did not. So I ended up buying something that I never could have afforded in Vancouver. I bought in Kelowna a 1,000 square foot condo right downtown with a view of the lake. It was a two bedroom, spacious, bright, window to ceiling condo. It was absolutely stunning. And I'm going to be honest, when I arrived in Kelowna, I was a little bit in shock because coming from Vancouver, it was just such a different city. And it definitely took me some time to get used to my surroundings, the slower pace of everything, and just the general vibe. But I have fallen in love with this city, and I'm so happy that I made the move. Now, not much longer after I moved to Kelowna, I found out that I was expecting my daughter. Now, new city, new job, new apartment, no friends, and pregnant. So it was a lot. But it got me really thinking about whether or not this condo was the right place for me and my daughter. So about a year later, I think my daughter was about seven months. I sold my condo, and in that one year, I made about $150,000 in equity. I would have never been able to save that kind of money by depositing it into a bank account. So when I say that being in the market is necessary to get ahead, I, I'm not joking. Having this condo allowed me to buy a townhome. I ported my mortgage. My mortgage payments were exactly the same. I was able to get a three-story condo with three bedrooms, and it was beautiful. We were there for about two years, and then COVID happened. And again, I reevaluated my life and where I wanted to be moving forward. An opportunity came up. A, a house went up for sale in Lake Country. So now we're looking in the burbs and I had to make another sacrifice if I wanted to be in a detached home with potentially a suite. 
So I really, again, thought about it and I decided to make that sacrifice. I was moving closer to family, which was a pro. However, I was moving away from my friends, my job, my community, everything that I knew. Again, I decided to go ahead. I I purchased this fixer upper with myself and my daughter. I am by no means a handyman. I'm very lucky I had family to help me. But it allowed me to get into my very first home, which I am here today still. And that was three years ago. And again, on that townhome, I made about $75,000. I have been in this house for three years. Since then, my husband has moved in with me. We got married. And we actually put this house up for sale briefly because we thought we might be making a move somewhere. It immediately got a full price offer, but we ended up declining and taking it off the market. But that offer showed me that my home had grown in equity by $420,000 in three years. Again, I would not be able to save that money by myself. So if you are thinking about buying a home, I want you to start here. Number one, and I I can truly speak to this because I've been a mortgage broker, I'm a realtor, and I talk to clients, first-time home buyers all the time about what they are looking for. And they get really frustrated when they don't qualify for what they want. So it's really important that you actually manage your expectations. Your first home is not going to be your dream home. It's just not. I was really lucky that it it was my dream condo. But again, I moved away from everything that I knew to start a life. And maybe your first home is needs a fresh coat of paint, needs new light fixtures, needs new flooring. However, all of that will actually earn you money when you sell and build that equity. And some people will say, well, what about interest rates? Interest rates were way lower when you bought than they are now. And yes, that is true. However, with interest rates being higher, the product isn't moving as much. So you're also getting property on sale. I just saw a listing that got decreased by $200,000. So you're saving $200,000 by buying that property now versus when interest rates were lower. Even just doing those tiny little upgrades, painting a front door, for example, if you're in a detached home, can add thousands of dollars to your sale. Lighting is crazy what lighting can do in terms of how a home feels when you walk in. Pulling out carpet, putting in the right flooring, and basically just giving it a makeover that doesn't cost very much and the next year you can sell that property for thousands and thousands of more dollars and that is essentially how you build equity number one you manage your expectations and number two you make sacrifices um, to get where you want to be so if you're looking to buy a home or come to the okanagan and you're not sure where to start even if it comes to saving up your down payment i can help you with that in terms of giving you some tips and tricks on what you can do. Give me a call. Again, my name is Stephanie Lafergi. I work in the Move Okanagan Real Estate Group, and I would love to help you relocate to this amazing city. Thank you so much for listening to my story. If it inspired you, I'd love to hear it. Don't forget to like this video.